Is Texas really great? That is the topic of today's video. Thank you for checking in with us. Before we can understand if Texas is great, we have to first understand what Texas is. Demographically, Texas is two different states, the southern part of the state being Hispanic and the northern part of the state being Anglo. And it's important for you to know that because they are very distinct regions of the state. With polarizing political views, you can see that the Anglo section of the state is more conservative. The real estate market in the most conservative parts of Texas right now is as bad as Louisiana and Mississippi, with home prices decreasing. There's also a surge of inventory in the state of Texas right now, so crap really isn't looking great for the state. At least when it comes to the real estate market, there's definitely been a slowdown. Similar with what's happened in Florida, there's been a disenchantment with Texas. They sold people a dream, but people are waking up to the reality now. You may have heard people say that there's a crisis on the border of Texas. I've driven about 90% of the border and I can tell you for the most part, that's mostly just political garbage. The amount of security along the Texas border is absolutely insane and it's not just along the border, there's about a 100 mile corridor of nothing but surveillance. But I heard on Fox News that the border was a part of Pisces. Alright, first thing Billy, please get the microphone out of your mouth. And second, Billy, you've never left your small town like in the last 20 years, so what the crap do you actually know? The amount of security along the border is just absolutely insane, to the point that cities like El Paso, Laredo, and other border towns are among some of the safest places in the United States. And most of the illegal things that are coming through Texas are coming through with cooperation from corrupt U.S. officials. It's just a transit point with not really any crime on the ground stagnant. You would literally have to be an inbred child of Billy with his cousin Mary, or stuck on the moon since birth, and the only connection you have to the outside world is a TV that only gets Fox News. To believe that the U.S. government could possibly do anything more to secure this region other than maybe figure out who the crap is involved in the corruption. Because it's really an impenetrable wall of surveillance with the only real flawed being corruption from within. Because of the size and geography of Texas and being the furthest towards the east out of all the border states, we can clearly assume that it's going to have a lot more troubles than let's say California or Arizona. Really, if you're moving to Texas, you want to end up in what's known as the Triangle. Those are the three largest cities. Anything west of the Triangle is practically New Mexico. Anything east of the Triangle is practically Alabama. And the northwest corner of the state is practically Oklahoma. And really, with the exception of the Triangle, most of Texas really isn't great with the exception of maybe Corpus Christi and some areas like El Paso. I guess they didn't really give people the memo that the great part of Texas is really this triangle. Everything outside of that triangle is really not worth moving to. So when we say, is Texas a great state? Well, Houston's great, Dallas is great, San Antonio and Austin are great, but the rest of the state is really a desert bowl. Indistinguishable from New Mexico and on the eastern part of the state when you get to about Austin it really gets better all the way through the triangle it's a nice area but anything east of that triangle once you step outside of Houston you're practically in the deep south again. So yes Texas is a great state but it's not every part of Texas. Geographically, the natural beauty of Texas is really limited to an area outside of San Antonio, somewhat around Austin, and of course the beaches. Somewhat the cities are beautiful, but once you get outside again of these nice little areas, the vast majority of Texas is nothing more than a rusted out, toxic vibe, wasteland, arid places, so we do have beaches along the coast, we do have beautiful large cities like Austin, San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, but the vast majority of Texas really isn't a place you want to move to. Besides the fact that Texas has absolutely no concern for their environment, they've completely destroyed the landscape of their state for oil production and other industries that are even present along the coast. 
And sure, that provides jobs for people like Billy who haven't figured out you can make a living on YouTube. So sure, people who don't know how to read in Texas can make a living driving a semi-truck full of chemicals or perhaps digging a hole in the ground and watching oil come out of it and happily live in a camper from the 1960s in the middle of an oil field in Midland, Texas. Some people are happy like that, but the vast majority of us are aware that you can't freaking destroy the earth to make money. So while people in California and Florida make a living taking pictures of flowers next to the beach, people in Texas have figured out that they can make a living by basically putting holes in the ground and watching oil come out of it. And all that's fine and dandy if you have a $1,400 a month car payment on your F950. But when I go to Galveston, Texas to see the coast, I want to see beaches, seals, and wildlife, not freaking oil rigs for hundreds of miles. And it's this reckless annihilation of the state's few natural scenic areas and this drunk guy who thinks he works for TSA who have completely destroyed Texas' reputation. As well as the fact that, oh, just for the production of oils for Billy's F950, we have to destroy the entire world. Personally, if we're going to send an entire state into annihilation, I would hope it would have been Alabama or New Mexico, but hey, we've decided it's Texas. Although Mississippi and Louisiana would have already been good options. Oh wait, they're destroyed already. But anyways, we have to get our oil from somewhere, and that place is good old Texas. And, and then there's a crackhead prostitute. Yeah. And uh, she gets money both ways. Literally, no exaggeration, there's so much contamination in the air in Texas that many people, despite loving their state, have actually had to move out because they quite literally cannot breathe. And let's not forget the eastern tip of Texas is practically the deep south. Despite that, a lot of Karens from California have actually moved to this region only to discover that perhaps Fox News was a little misleading about how great Texas was. People are starting to see the destruction of the ecology, the fact that it's like a million degrees, and let's not even get started on how bad some of these small rural towns in the western part of the state are. It's like literally Bradenton meets Philadelphia. And despite the larger cities like Houston and Austin being beautiful cities, people are starting to figure out that there's a crap load of crime in these places. And then when you think crap just couldn't get any worse, a deer goes flying through your windshield at 70 miles an hour. Then you realize that these small towns in western Texas are literally going to crap. They're decrepit, they're full of gangs, and of course the good old drugs like anywhere else in America are prevalent in the western part of the state. However, it is good to know that Texas has some good things going for it. It does have one of the lowest overdose death rates in the country, and that's mostly thanks to the state's large Hispanic population. If you look at the parts of the state that are mostly Anglo again, well, those parts of the state are really suffering. Texas also has one of the youngest populations in the country, and right now most of the overdoses are happening in people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, which makes Texas have one of the lowest drug overdose death rates. But again, it's not the entire Texas that's seeing that. It's mostly the places that have large Hispanic populations. Waco, Texas is an oddball because it's like a part of Louisiana or Mississippi right in the heart of the triangle. And I will say that Waco doesn't look like it belongs in the triangle. When you get up to Texarkana, you're practically in Louisiana. So you have to consider that Texas is a massive state. Regions like the big cities that are thriving and small towns that are completely dead and going to crap. I, I, it's a, I know that they bought drugs for some of the money. A lot of people wanted to make you believe that it was the entire state of Texas that was prospering but in reality, most of the landscape of Texas isn't, and a lot of the great things that are happening in Texas are, like I said, the larger cities. Failing to recognize that most of the great analytics that the state of Texas has are coming from the Hispanic areas of the state. It's really these large and diverse cities that are attracting people and growing, making the state as a whole look attractive, but if you look at the rural areas of Texas, they're really horrible places to live. But there's one thing that makes Texas very different than the rest of the South, and that is that the people in Texas are very hard working. And if you're coming from a state where you're not used to that, you're gonna struggle to find opportunities in employment because the people of Texas really are some of the hardest working people in the United States. There's no slacking here. 
These boys in Texas, they're not singing country songs like Hank Williams Jr. about how hard they work or anything they'll do to survive. No, these Texas boys are actually working and surviving. So while people in Alabama and Georgia are singing country songs about plowing a field, these boys in Texas are actually plowing that field. So if you're moving to Texas from Alabama, Mississippi, or Louisiana, you're going to find that you're a very unattractive asset to the labor force in a place where people actually work like animals. If there's one thing I have to respect of the people of Texas, it's how hard they work. It can be 120 degrees in the desert. These guys are go-getters and hustlers. And it's true that a country boy from Texas will put to shame a country boy from anywhere in the South when it comes to working because they actually do have a very strong work ethic. Except, of course, for Tyler, Texas. Just remember that northeast corner of the state? They're actually Alabama, but the rest of Texas has really good work ethic. Oil production is not exactly the easiest route to shoes. It's really hard work. In Texas, they know that it takes more than a beard and a truck to be a man. It takes being able to work hard to provide for a family. And sure, they didn't have time to go to the studio and make a song about it like Alabama did, but just know that if you're moving to Texas, that the labor force is very competitive and that people here are not wimps. They're actually willing to go out there and work like animals. So if you move to Texas and you start working your new job and you're lazy and you like to procrastinate, you're going to find really quickly that they're going to replace you with somebody willing to work a whole lot harder. Or not lazy. Yeah. That crackheads over there are lazy. <laughs> they, they, they do drugs all day. Yeah. And, and they get mad when people don't give them money. With the exception, of course, of Waco, Texas. These guys aren't doing crap. Forget about what you saw on a TV show. This is what Waco, Texas actually looks like. Fairly run down and uninviting. And truly, just too many people are starting to find out that what they saw on TV or heard on a talk show in the morning wasn't really the reality of what Texas was about. I'm not kidding. Especially coming from a beautiful state like California, ending up in a place like Waco, Texas that looks like this, I'm sure that's not the way it was portrayed on that TV show. My husband and I wanted to buy a fixer upper, but this is like a downer dumper. And let's not forget about the good old boy system, which is present in a lot of these small towns in Texas, which means if you're not part of the big boys club, you may not be welcome to stay that long after all. Even people who move to large cities like Austin are now starting to feel some disappointment with their decision to move to Texas. Many of them are starting to leave the state and they're finding now that there's more inventory than there are actually people willing to move to an arid desert. So is Texas a great state? I think instead of calling it the Lone Star State, we need to call it the Lone Triangle. The triangle's great. Most of Texas is a horses. But hey, somewhere has to be America's oil production wasteland. And luckily for us here in Florida, that's Texas. I mean, just look at this. Can you imagine this being your daily commute? Nothing but semi-trucks and oil rigs in all directions. Isn't that just like the most depressing thing you could look at? All right, so let's talk to a resident of Texas. I have somebody on the line from Waco, Texas, who's not very happy of my depiction of Texas, and in particular of his town, Waco. So I'll let him finish today's video. Hey, you know, man, that boy ain't right, man. Just talk, talk about Waco like that, man. Just talk about that blue bank sky like that, man, down here in Texas, man. Don't... Man, that boy just that ain't right, man. Don't they talk like that to tell my boy like just hard working down there, dang good old family vibe down there talking about that ain't the boy that don't say nothing like that. When he when he just come on like that, man. I'm just trying to tell you like the sky blue like the dang horse ride down there by the field. You just gotta know what time it is with the family down there about moving here from California talking about man, man no Starbucks down there, put that dang old just just dang old coffee shop, man. Man, like, man, born into this world, man, a butterfly didn't fall by the tree down there. It's just an oil rig burning down in the sky. Truck, that F-350 squatted down there, just rode off into the sunset down there by the top of Tio down there. You just got to tell you what, man, you got old toe to toe to toe down there. You just put that trailer hook on, hook up down there, right off into the sunset down like that one song talking about Amarillo, man. You just down there, sunset some sun dust down there, working hard with the family down there, hard working folk talking about, man. It just ain't right talking folk like that just here in Texas, man. 
Hey, what I do, man? Just hit that unsubscribe button, man. You know, you can't follow the thing. Don't even got a real job down there about a world rig like a real man talking about uploading video down there with the keyboard and that computer all day. And Doc County ain't gonna come down here and get a job down there by that oil rig. You can get off that share down there and start doing real man work here in Texas by that oil rig. We can't show you down there for about talk about bad about Texas. Come on here, working up feel like a man. We'll talk show you about Texas, man. Tell you what, just that boy ain't right, man. Tell you, but just hit that unsubscribe down there. Just get off all somebody else, man, down there. That ginger belly or something, something better like that, man.